happy Tuesday on a prime day. It's prime day, everybody. Brian Romska got his cam cable today. I only have one. And I should have actually kept some more. But uh, it was a lot of fun. I did not make these. I had them made from a nice company called Snake Oil Cables. They make the they make cables for um, shit audio as well. Yeah. Anyway, I only have one. I should have kept more. But like, people are buying them, so I'm like, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna keep a bunch of these if people want to buy them. So sold out in a day, one day. Uno. Uno day. What should be my next product that I make? Uh, I am helping a friend pair of Howard Sub to slot in with his Yamo floor standing clips in ceiling surround atmosphere speakers in the basement. What you got? Um, you know, for subs, I kind of my de facto recommendation is SVS because the app is so awesome and they obviously know what they're doing when it comes to subs. I like Emotiva subs. And then after that, I kind of go super budget. So Polk PSW 10, which we're going to talk about. Also the um, Sony is actually on sale. Hey, look at that. we got a bunch of cables coming in. Barry. All right. Let's shout out. Where are you from? Where's everybody from in here real quick? I like to do this. I like to see all the all the folks. I like to see where my all my wonderful viewers are from. So pop it in. Where are you from? Uno dia. That's one day, right? One day. I think so. All right, we got St. Louis, Chicago land, Underhill, Vermont. Um, put it on the Underhills, Bill. What um, what movie is that from? Oh my goodness. Wow. They're really rocking in. All right. Hold on. Hold on. Greg Freeman, Emotiva Land, Franklin, Tennessee. Hmm. Hmm. That's fun to be in Tennessee. Uh, big sale on Klipsch. Okay. Um, Brian's from Michigan. Well, I don't think cables necessarily make speakers sound better. They absolutely can make a difference. Use cheap RCA mm -hmm. to my subwoofer and the sub pops. Yeah, I had some subwoofer issues. Not, um, I mean, RCA issues with noise. Grand Rapids, Oregon. Felix from Germany. Guten Tag. Magnetic Cinema, Michigan. Greg Freeman, Emotiva. Okay, we already talked about that. Jeff Caldwell, D.C. Cedar Springs, Michigan. Karen Finkbeiner. Park Ave 98, Wisconsin. All right. Another Michi Michiganian, a lot of Michigan folks, uh, San Diego, California, Tulsa, Oklahoma, 113 degrees one time in Tulsa, Oklahoma. The the uh, tollway was on fire between Oklahoma City and Tulsa. I felt like I was in the bowels of hell. Um, Webwood, Ontario, Canada. All right, Randy. All right, we got New York, Kevin, Seattle, Mars, Menard. What's up, Randy? Over here in Fargo, North Dakota. Very good. Matt's a real man. He lives up there by the Canadian border. Up where it's cold in the winter. Kentucky. Manchester, England. Martin Hadfield. You are familiar. All right. Ensenatas, California. Baltimore. Oh, my goodness. All right. We got another uh, Californian. Orange County, Italy. Oh, man, I want to go back to Italy. Tucson, Arizona, Lebanon, Tennessee, some Tennessee folks, Florida, Lansing, Michigan, Mississippi, Mary Page Butler. We have a girl in here? How strange is that? Um, just kidding. Thank you for being here, Mary. Now you probably never want to come back. Um, Patrick Sullivan, beautiful, Fort Collins, Colorado. My uncle lives in Fort Collins. London, Ontario, Stockholm, Sweden. Yay. I imagine everything's just clean in Sweden. I don't know why. That's, I just think of like really clean streets and like beautiful looking people. I don't know why. Detroit, Donald Dietz, 
James P from the UK. Jose Cintron, Virginia. Rochester, New York. Connecticut. Got lost in Connecticut once. Fresno, California. Katy, Texas. My buddy lives in Katy. Um, West Virginia. All right. Leon, Mexico. I'd like to go back to Mexico too. Los Angeles. You're awesome. You're awesome, Mike from LA. Uh, Frederick, Maryland. Joseph Kelly. Looking all cool with your hat. Um, Fletch. Yeah, very good. Fletch, the Underhills. Abu Dhabi. What? I think this is the first Abu Dhabi fo person, person I've ever had in here. West Virginia. All right, we're going to have to stop doing this pretty soon. Uh, East Sussex in the UK, Rod Crew. Uh, Madison, Mississippi. Kalamazoo, Michigan. What's up with all the Michigan folks? All right. Cleveland. It keeps going. All right. Almost done. Vancouver Island, BC. I've been there. Ottawa. A lot of Canadians. Big Sky Country. What is that? Uh, Montana. Inman, South Carolina, <laughs> Kennerwick, Washington, Orlando. I lived in Orlando for a while. Uh, Rochester, New York. Um, a pair of Emotiva B1 Plus is worth upgrading to the B2s. Mm, maybe. Irving, Texas, you're just right down the road. All right, Glen Falls, New York. Um, any good deals on subs? SVS. Okay, so let's get into this. I'm sorry. We got San Antonio, Arizona. All right. Stuck in jury duty. Perfect. Um, that they let, let you watch uh, YouTube. Uh, another um, friend from the UK, Louisville, Kentucky, Oklahoma City. Very good. All right. All right. All right. Sorry. We got Houston, Southwest Wisconsin, Tacoma, Wisconsin, Montreal, Frederick, Maryland, Kingwood, Texas. All right. We got to stop doing this. All right. So some prime deals that I think are pretty good um, that I found this morning. And if I miss anything, just let me know. Pop it in the comments over here. A lot of comments coming in, though. Coming in quickly. Quickly, quickly. All right. So I'm going to pop this up on the screen if I can. See if this works. I'm sharing my screen, but the part I want to... There we go. Pop. And then we will... Push this over here. Come back to here. All right. And then I'm going to share my screen. Boom. Okay. Um, let me see. I don't want you to see all this. I don't know how to do this. All right. So we're going to go. All right. First and foremost, Amazon Link is a, if you're into Amazon Music, all every time we do a prime day um oh super sticker thank you michael okay i'm trying to get to all the super stickers too here but we're we got a we got a lot to go over all right thank you michael you're awesome all right amazon link if you're into amazon music and amazon music only really amazon link is a great deal at 160 dollars. so you're getting native amazon music in, uh, integration High pass filter, yeah. Uh, tone controls, subwoofer output, um, optical output, optical input, RCA input. So really, this is a um, preamp of sorts. And for one hundred sixty dollars, and if you're heavy Amazon Music listener, it's an absolute no brainer. This is like a blue sound for Amazon Music. And the coolest thing is they have the Amazon Music connect feature so a lot of us know about title connect spotify connect things like that amazon doesn't do that except for its own products so amazon link and if you only have one product in your prime member i think you can get you can turn on amazon music hd for like five bucks for one device which is crazy tel aviv israel all right. Philippines. Very nice. You look like you're having a good time there. Uh, Bulgaria. Bulgaria. All right. 
Um, so yeah, let's see if we got any other super chats. Um, any good deals on headphones? Um, I didn't see any. Like, so I, I searched AKM, not AKM, AKG headphones this morning, and I didn't see any. I don't know if Sennheiser's running any deals or not. All right, let's go back to here. What do I have next? All right. And I think all of these are linked in the description. I think I put these in the, in the description. All right. ELAC. BS41s. These are great speakers, and they're $120. And if you are so inclined, you can do a quick and easy crossover modification where you change out the largest inductor on the woofer circuit and then you can do it for about 40 bucks and you can maintain the same thing which apparently gives you even better bass and cleans things up a bit even though i think they're fine just the way they are and for 120 bucks can't really go wrong um, with these and i looked my sony sscs5s are not are not are not on sale they're probably going sale tomorrow we'll see though your cables are out for delivery today so happy um hey dan stein sound core by anchor liberty 3 pro noise canceling 89.99 brought a pair after the dog ate the last ones uh dan's got a great story about his dog um having some issues um with his things actually i have that right here dan look at this Boom, right there. There we go. So this came out um, for 160 bucks. These are absolutely my daily drivers, except I fell asleep with one in my ear because I laid my head on one side and then I have the other one. I fell asleep and I haven't been able to find it yet. And Dan, there was no dog in there. So I think it's we're safe on this one. Um, but yeah, so I'm still searching for my other... Soundcore. But these have a great app. They have um, noise canceling. They have adaptive noise canceling. You can make calls with them. I don't really do that, but I have done it before and it's fine. Um, EQ in the app. It's great. They're great. They're fantastic. And they're really good at $90. I would still pay $160 for these. But they're really, really good at $90. All right. Digital Dan Stein. One of my best friends ever. Hi from England. Oh, King Spartacus is back. Very good. Here we go. If you install <clears throat> on your phone, you can connect to the Wing Mini for the native Amazon Music app, right? But you still can't drop into the... You can control it using voice commands which you can do obviously on the link as well but like the connect feature that's the one feature that i love because then i'm not going through the Wii map on anything or the <clears throat> app i don't want to say her name she gets real she starts ch chatting at me uh sennheiser 599 or something like 90 bucks no kidding and let's go over here search sennheiser headphones um drop may be running some stuff too i haven't been on drops website uh sennheiser headphones beats um all right sennheiser cx 300 s's all right these are really really flat and obviously they're like monitoring headphones 560s 150 I don't know if that's a prime deal or not. That's a good, uh, I really like the 560S. I don't like the cable that comes with it, but it's a good, good headphone. Audio Technica. Sennheiser HD 660S, $300. I always find it interesting when someone can just like randomly just knock off two or $300. It tells me their margins are pretty healthy uh, for them to be able to do that. All right, let's go back here. We got another man. We got all sorts of people from the UK. 
Flux Capacitor, 21. Hey, another super chat. Colton, I just bought a pair of Klipsch R620F. And I have a Sony STRDH190 hooked up to them. In your opinion, should I change out the Sony amp for a better one? You know, that's not a bad pairing because the Sony is pretty warm sounding, full sounding. And those Klipsch, although I'm not familiar with that model, I would imagine that they have the Klipsch sound. So you're probably doing good because your clips are probably fairly efficient as well. And that amp doesn't like to drive low impedance loads. So it will drive like four ohm loads, but it will go into protect fairly easily. So eight ohm speaker, high efficiency, warmish sounding amplifier. I think that's a great, great combination. Uh, if you really, if you're itching to buy something, I'd buy maybe, uh, a Weem Mini and a DAC or by the Amazon link or something like that um, and plug it right into that Sony. It's um, it's a good, good, good combination. Hey, Fire Stick's on sale. Yes. And I'm going to probably pick this one up because I missed out on it last time. A 4K, Apple TV 4K. And in my home, we have Apple TVs everywhere. I've got like three of them. But this, like the one I have is the generation older than this. For 123 bucks. I'm probably getting this today. The only bad thing is I was running Tidal on it yesterday. And you can't skip tracks um, if you're running a playlist. So I don't know what it is. You have to go back into the playlist and hit it. So anyway. 123 bucks though for an Apple TV 4K is pretty legit. And at one time they were the only streaming hardware that would stream Atmos for uh, movies and stuff like that. Uh, Kevin's got a question. Echo Link versus Weem. Is that a fair fight? Um, it depends. Like if you want something outside of Amazon Music, than the Weem all day long. But if you are just Amazon Music, I mean the functionality of the Echo Link walks all over the weem what i like the weem for is is versatility across multiple platforms but the link actually has a pretty decent DAC in it and then it has all type um all types of uh, like high pass tone controls all sorts of stuff um that you can do yeah <laughs> triangle bro threes down to 349 yeah <laughs> Triangles, I get a kick out of triangle because like they were like super hot when they first came on um, the scene. Wonder why that it was. Wonder why that speaker was so hyped up. Try angle, bro. And it was like six hundred dollars. And now look at it. even the the regular price is down to three eighty eight. Another three forty nine, right? So that speaker was competing with like the Clips RP600M, the first generation, the ELAC debut reference. Here's the funny thing. I actually have Clips on here and it's the RP. Okay. So RP600M first generation, 379. Okay. Which is actually not a bad deal because that's a, it's a decent speaker if you know what you're getting into with the sound signature and everything. It's a, it's a good speaker, and at $379, it's a great speaker. All right, check this out. RP600M2, now 562, which is so funny because this is the pricing game in, like, this is an example of the pricing game. So you have the RP600M Mark II. When it came out, I did the review on it, $750. Suddenly... It's $562. So what I want to kind of like drive home is this is not a supply and demand issue. This is a marketing strategy by these companies like Klipsch, Kef, even ELAC, JBL, Yamo. Although Yamo's prices have stayed fairly, fairly um, stable. However, when you look at companies like SVS or Emotiva, their prices stay stable they will occasionally go up but in talking to them their margins 
are set at a certain price level. So when their costs go up, they, of course, have to raise prices. But they don't raise prices. They don't have prices bouncing all over the place like Klipsch, like tri Triangle. Um, yeah, I think the, the Bro 3 uh, ship has sailed. Because um, it seems like there's an awful lot of them uh, laying around somewhere. Because it is not uncommon for them to go on sale. 349. I paid 450 for these things used. Used. Yeah. So anyway, Triangle Bro 3s. Right, we got a super chat. Uh, initial thoughts. Can you see that? I don't think you can. Oh, it's Bob. Bob, I can't see where you went. Here we go. Uh, initial thoughts on the Fozzie slash IEMA tube phono preamp. My, I don't have it. I have long-term thoughts. I've been using it for a long time. I think it's good. I think it's dynamic. Um, not the last word in resolution, but for $70, what can you really expect? I personally think it sounds more natural than a lot of phono preamps installed on integrated amplifiers or preamps costing a lot more. So for $70, I think the Fozzie Audio slash Duke Audio slash IEMA, they all use the same thing. It's just put in a different box or sometimes it's not even put in a different box. It's just got a different label or different name on it. I think if you're getting into um, turntables and you want an affordable phono preamp that you can have fun changing the tubes for $70, I don't think there's a better deal in town. Uh, I don't even know what it is. Um, I'm actually running a more expensive here. Let's do this. I'm running a much more expensive phono stage right now. So, yeah, this is what it looks like. And it's pretty, they're all pretty much the exact same. I got some tubes here. Um, there is an LED in here. So, like, the tube glow is faux, faux glow. It's faux glow. Soul, soul glow. What movie is that from? Um, anyway. Yeah, I think it's great. Bob, from talking to you, though, I don't feel like you think it's very good. I thought tone controls are evil. Not for me. I love tone controls. RP600M sounds great. Great. Uh, coming to America, Brian Romskin nailed it. What Fozzie model is that? I need one. Um, it's like the phono, phono box or something. Here, I'll pull it up. I will pull it up just one moment. Oh, if you guys want to support the channel, you don't have to buy these products. But if you're going to do any shopping on Amazon, click through one of these links. And like if you're buying lawn darts or a tent or a television or a fan, it helps out the channel because it doesn't cost you any more. So any shopping you do on Amazon, if you could click through my links, it'd be greatly appreciated. And uh, supports the channel, lets me bring in more products without having companies have to send me products. Because, well, I really appreciate everybody sending me products. When I buy something, it's it's kind of cool when I buy something, do a review on it. Because I don't have to worry about, like, even though most companies are really cool, even if I give it a kind of a ho-hum review, some people get a little bit mad if they don't like what you're saying. So being able to buy everything is a, a lot funner. Ozzy Audio Phono Preamp. All right, there we go. Audio Box X2. Oh, it's $55. Man, this one needs to go on the list. Um, 55 Smackaroos. Uh, all right. Where can I put this in here? Put it right here. Boop. Boop. And then we shall heart that or star it. Um, 55 bucks, man, for a fun little tube. I guess I have rolled these tubes. These aren't the stock tubes. What are these? No, these are Chinese tubes. Hmm. Maybe I did roll them. Thank you. You're welcome. Uh, I have an X-Duo MT602, and I do do not hear a difference. From what? 
Um, <laughs> like, from what are you comparing it to? Um, I have that. I think I have that. Uh, any outdoor amp recs? Oof, no, I don't really. I don't really have any recommendations for those, man. You know what you should do is just go buy a um, buy like a not a car stereo, but like a boat stereo, and then just run twelve volts into it, and then run an external amp because most of those have RCAs. You'll have to fiddle around with some twelve volt um, stuff, but I think they're like pretty weatherproof obviously if they're going to be on a boat the fives 460 yeah that's another thing i think the fives are a bit long in the tooth and clips is probably coming out with something new um look at that 460 dollars they um they've been going down 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 even the regular price now is, I think, 500 bucks. A star. All right. Ooh, soundbar suggestions. Um, I have a definitive technology in here right now. It's a little tiny one. It's not my favorite. Eclipse Cinema 600. I like that one. Uh, um, you can get wireless surrounds and it works great it's really really good for movies that's it though like movies and tv it's really really good for movies and tv um it's passable if you're not an audiophile or for like background music it's very clean so it's cinema 600 i like that one Randy, so like I said, I have the Sony STR DH190 driving the Klipsch, and then I have an AT, okay, with an Ortofon 2 m red, then running it through the Fozzy Tube Phono preamp. I'm looking to upgrade something in the system. Uh, Colton, thank you for the super chat, and I'm sorry I didn't answer your question properly. Um, hmm. Okay. If you want more clarity in the Phono stage, you can get a iFi Zen Phono. Let me see if they're on sale. Very clean, very good. Um, iFi Zen Phono. Uh, no, they are not on sale. Shocking. Um, not on sale. All right. Or I've been playing around with this one. Now, this is not cheap by any stretch of the imagination. But it does sound pretty awesome. Project Tube Box S2. 500 for this thing. But it sounds really good. Um, really clean. And you get the tubes. I don't have the Zen Phono anymore to directly compare them. But... This is fun, and I'm probably going to buy this. Um, this is probably not leaving the house. Anyway. As far as, let's see. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, uh, order font 2 in red. Uh, you can also look at getting a uh, different cartridge. Uh, the 2 in red is a bit forward in the upper mid-range. Not super balanced, in my opinion. Uh 2M blue. And here's a little trick. So you don't have to even pull the cartridge off. What you can do is you can switch out the stylus or the needle. You can get a Ortofon blue 2M blue needle mm -hmm. and you can pull it off and pull off the red and then put that one in because it's the same cart. So the only difference between those carts is the stylus. And you, I think you can get a stylus for $204, which is a little bit, um, seems like it's high, but um, it's a quick and easy way, 910 ratings, quick and easy way to, um, hold on, I got to block somebody. Come on, put user in timeout. No, I want to block them. Dang it. We had some spam. Spam. There, hold on. Anyway. Where are the moderators? 
Oh, I bet you can't moderate since I'm going through StreamYard. Anyway, yeah, that's what I would do, man. Uh, take a look at upgrading the phono stage to uh, iFi Zen Phono. And then I actually, I would probably spend my money on the, the replacement stylus first because I think you're going to hear a pretty significant upgrade right off the bat. Right off the bat, got another vote for the 2M Blue. From Mar Marijan. Colton, you need to quit giving me money. Okay, I'll switch to the blue and switch to the uh, Project Phono. Okay, man, you're going to have a rocking system, man. Very good. Very good. Very good. Yeah, there's an ambient warner. Um, the art DJ Pre 2 Phono preamp is supposed to be very good. I've uh, Have you ever taken a listen to it? No. I do have this one in here too, though. Let me go full screen. The Puffin, which there's a lot of cool stuff going on in here. It, um, it's it's really not a phono preamp. It's like a phono processor. So it'll take out clicks and pops. It'll do all sorts of things. So um, this comes highly recommended from my good friend Digital Dan. And so I'm looking forward to this. Faux show. Uh, Brian missed my live. I got mad, watched it later. Love your response and attitude. Don't take a crap from anybody. Good stuff as usual. Thank you. Um, I watched it back. I guess I didn't get as mad as I thought I did. Um, at the time, I felt I was really felt like I was angry. I wish I would have gone blue from the get go. Yeah, I think that's a lesson learned. It was a lesson learned for me too, because I had the um, RT eighty three that came with the two M red, and then I ended up upgrading to the blue anyway but um yeah 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 ortofon have recently released the concord mark ii elite pretty pricey though kevin ken champion i was gonna call you kevin champion show is really great i if you're talking about my show thank you very much uh two m blue is a very nice cartridge but if you can swing the two m bronze now that is an upgrade. What does that cost? 2M bronze. Mm -hmm. Four nineteen. Yoza. Four hundred nineteen. All right. Uh, and I got a pre-mounted to a red head shell, so switching to a blue stylus would be patriotic. There you go, man. Shannon Parks and his wife build the puffins by hand at his home in Washington State. Yeah, I, that's who I was. Uh, that's who I was talking with. That's who I was talking with, Shannon. That's cool, man. So here, I love small um, audio companies. So. Let's give this a little bit, some more pub. The Puffin, Parks Audio, Phono DSP, all right? If you're interested, go check them out. Um, I have not, it's still in the box, so I haven't even listened to it yet. But Digital Dan, who I trust implicitly, 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 has one. It's a, uh, you get the thumbs up from Dan, so... Dan's been an audiophile for like 50 years, so he knows what he's talking about. No, but he, um, good. Um, it's the middle of the afternoon, so that means the dog's barking. One of Hank's Pomeranians has gotten out again. Uh, Kevin Wagner. Sorry. What's your favorite closed back headphone? Um, I think it would be the Dan Clark Aeon. RT, it's five hundred dollars. Um, for something more affordable, the Sivga SVO twenty one is not bad. Um, let's see, for open packs, oh, nobody watched this video because nobody likes my headphone videos. Apparently, these 
are spectacular. These are the Meze 109 Pros. I was listening to these for probably three hours last night. And the, the review's already done. So a lot of times, like when I review something, that's it. I don't listen to it again. Um, but I couldn't wait to get those back on my head. Uh, what is your record player of choice for the Ortofon? I think the uh, RT83. So if you're buying the Ortofon and you're looking for a turntable, like get the RT85. It's $500. So, and it's a $200 cartridge, right? So that's it's a good turntable. It comes with an acrylic platter, comes with the auto stop, a uh, bunch of cool stuff. Uh, but yeah, that would probably be my turntable of choice. RT82, 83, 84, 85. Um, how about can a ten dollar DAC be? I'm gonna find out. You know what um, is not bad is the um, uh, what is the Apple Lightning to three point five millimeter, and that's less than ten bucks. It's actually pretty good. I think that cartridge is compatible with all needles. I don't know which one you're talking about. If it's the Ortofon, you can only upgrade one level. So if you have the red, you can only go up to the blue. You can't put the bronze needle on the red or the blue, I think. I think you can go bronze to black, though. So there's two that have uh, switchable styli, but once you go, but you can only go up one level. And you can't go up from the blue to the bronze, I don't think. Anyway, love your headphone vids. Brian, you're about the only person that loves my headphone vids. That was like the worst performing video I've done all year. That Meze video. Uh, I upgraded from the stock platter on my DC. Nice upgrade. Very cool. Whoo, boy. All right. I'm just picking a random one here. Howdy, Randy. What is a good complement speaker to the Polk R200 to use in rotation with it? Oh, Par Polk R200 is a good speaker across the board. Maybe has a little bit of emphasis on the bottom and the top. It's got that uh, ring radiator tweeter. I would say something like, Something like this would be a good compliment to it. Something that was maybe leaned a little bit warmer. If you have the budget, um, the Denton, it's 500 bucks today. Lowest is, I think it's ever been, ever been. Orfield Denton, 80th anniversary. Very good. $500. $500, man. Here. Here, I don't want to break anything. Okay. Just look how this thing is built. All right. This is all wood veneer. This is a hefty speaker, man. One inch soft dome, five inch woofer goes down to 44 hertz. This is an absolutely stunning speaker for $500. And guess what? It sounds pretty darn good, too. Yep. Hui, hui. I don't want to scratch these. They're not mine. That was a lot. Um, Colton, $5 Canadian. Um, I have been looking at reviews on Klipsch speakers. Why does everyone seem to crap on Klipsch speakers? I think they sound so clear and nice. They do. They do. They really do sound. So they have, you know, depending upon the level, uh, aluminum dome or titanium dome. So all the RP series has titanium dome. Um, it has a definite sound. I think why people, especially like audiophile reviewers and stuff, is because the mid-range has a tendency to be scooped out. So that the house curve or the house signature of the Klipsch is a bit of a U curve, and that's a curve that you know I use a lot on rock and roll stuff um, if it's a neutral speaker. So I think that's probably why. Um, I, I think the pricing structure, the marketing, the way they go to market, I think that might be, that may, that rubs me the wrong way. Personally, I don't think they're braced all that well, but I think in their lack of bracing, the <laughs> box resonance actually can add a bit to the vibe of the speaker, especially if you're listening to rock and roll. So I think that's probably the reason why, and I, this is purely subjective on my part, but if I was a guessing man, that's what I would bet on. And um, I think there's a lot of margin on them. 
obviously you have a $750 speaker that just went down to $562 and it's going to bounce around like that uh, throughout the year. So I think the real deal with clip speakers is like the RP 600 M the first generation right now under $400. I think that's probably where that speaker should live. Um, if not a little bit lower, but when you're putting that up against something like the Emotiva B2 plus, like I'm picking the B2 pluses all day long because they still have that top end clarity, but it's actual clarity because it's an AMT tweeter. Um, and you have a better mid range. So, yeah, I think the 600 M Mark II is a little bit more linear, but frankly, like when I was comparing it to the 600 M, the first gen, I actually preferred the first gen because it's kind of like the second gen was kind of like Klipsch light. So if you're going to get Klipsch, get Klipsch, right? So anyway, it's a long way to go to say it's probably the mid range and the price and then the enclosure construction. Emmy Warner never heard a clip speaker too pricey where I live. I know they're far cheaper in the U.S. Yes. What do you think of the Apple TV as a streamer? I've been using it as a streamer for the past few days. Um, I think it's great. What I don't like is the app integration with it. And it's not Apple TV's fault. It's Tidal's fault. Um, so, yeah, I think it's great. You're really dependent. Like, if you're using Apple TV as a streamer, though, you are completely tied to the DAC that's in your receiver right unless you put an hdmi audio extractor in there and take out like an optical signal and put that into a dac and then run that dac back in to your um system but if you do that then you're kind of losing like the home theater aspect of it so if you're a receiver person and that's where you do all your listening i think the apple tv is great pulls double duty sounds great easy to operate um, so yeah, but if you're just a two channel person, Apple TV is probably not the right product for you. Uh, the puffin does not get the attention it deserves. Let's give it some more attention. Small family run business out of Washington state puffin phono DSP by parks audio. Look at how cool this box art is too. Look at that. How cool is this? All right. Go over to, uh, I don't know, Puffin, parksaudio.com. Anyway, go check these guys out. If you're a turntable aficionado, you got some old records, have a bunch of pops and clicks, um, go get you one. Uh, Echo Link for the pairing of Yamaha 801. Echo Link for the pairing of Yamaha. Yeah, if you're heavy into Amazon Music, the Echo Link is hard to beat. Uh, anyone know if the DAC in the Onkyo RZ50 is any good? I don't. A lot of times those DACs in there, though, are like Wolfson DACs or... Um, oh, it's owned by TI now. What is the name? Burr Brown. And those are not like the most resolute, but they sound really natural and good. So they cover up a lot of sins. So a lot of times the DAX and these receivers are actually pretty good. The problem is the amplifier section mm, can be a bit mm, thin on a lot of these home theater application, uh, uh, home theater receivers. You've heard a ton of speakers since your ELAC UB52 review. Has your opinion on them changed? UB52. No, not really. Um, I think it's probably the best neutral speaker available um, at its price. They take an inordinate amount of break in though. And I know people argue about that, but at $455, what you're getting here is spectacular. If you understand that when you first get this speaker, it's going to sound a bit dull until it doesn't and it takes weeks and one day i'm like i'm listening to this thing i'm like i don't like this and i kept listening to it kept listening to it and all of a sudden like the frequency response went from here to here so the top end opened up the bottom end filled out all at the same time so yeah all right 
Why does my VPI scout buzz no matter what? I don't know. What's the, I don't even know what a VPI scout is. Um, let's see. VPI, uh, VPI scout. Oh, is that a turntable? I have no idea what that is. Anybody know what the VPI scout is? Someone said earth issue. Power supply too close to the VPI. Why do my HDMI cables buzz? Because you don't have a high quality HDMI cable from audio quest. <laughs> I don't know, man. Uh, grounding issue. Uh... Power supply. Yeah, VPI is a turntable, right? I've just never had one in. Hold on. VPI Scout. There we go. Holy cow. $3,300? Wow. If I'm spending $3,300 on a turntable, they should come over and fix that. Um, so anyway... Uh, ground hum that seems to be the overarching explanation ultimate hi-fi setup in a boomer headphones man um mp3 player back in my day it was a cd player a um portable cd player that you'd have to lay flat took a bunch of triple double a batteries I put it in the uh, overhead when I was jogging and then I would always like yank it and then it would come down, boom, and just batteries would go everywhere. Uh, am I streaming tomorrow as well? Yes, I probably will because they run different sales on each day. So like today they run one thing and then tomorrow they'll run something else. Speaking of which, thank you for reminding me. Let's go back because there's some other good ones. Um, speaking about uh, ELAC, the original unifies. 296 which is crazy that's a crazy good speaker it's a little bit warm and it takes a bunch of power so it needs 100 watts but if you give it 100 watts this thing is really spectacular so if you've got a beefy amp 300 bucks for the speaker is incredible <sighs> yummy water all right what else? All right, subwoofer. So this is um, Sony's. Now this is the PSW10. So I've got two of these upstairs. They used to be like $125, but since everything went up, $160, still not a bad price. They're not going to shake your house off the foundation, but for $160, bucks, it's, um, it's not a bad subwoofer. And then... This is the one that really has my interest. This is, God, why do I keep doing that? I guess I put the wrong link on here. Hold on. Uh, anyway, let's just go here. I'll, um, I'll search it. The Sony subwoofer is on sale today. And... What? Wait a minute. It was a hundred man. So okay, that was a. Uh, I guess if we didn't get that one, you didn't get that one. It was one hundred sixty bucks this morning. Um, it looks like it is not one hundred sixty dollars anymore. So that was a uh, quick one. So if you missed it, you missed it. These are one hundred ninety eight dollars, which is too high. But hopefully tomorrow they um, they go on sale. All right. Hopefully I didn't miss any super chats. All right. Is it really true that passive clip speakers are best paired with Onkyo Pioneer or Integra? Um, well, let's, okay. Let's think about this one for a while. So Onkyo Pioneer and Integra all recently within the last year became part of the, the Voss family of companies which Clips is a member of. So really, I think Clips group is within Vo Vox. So then they got Onkyo Pioneer and Integra. Before Onkyo like, went out of business or filed for bankruptcy, they had already like spun off the receiver section to Clips. So 
being smart, they're all the same company now. So they're like, hey, let's do some type of, you know, easy room integration, speaker integration with our speakers. So is it really true? No. But there's some engineers that maybe understand something about the Klipsch speakers. So there's a button. Um, personally, I think it's probably a gimmick because you can run room correction on anything. Onkyo and Pioneers both come with, um, some models come with Dirac now. So like if you're getting a Dirac model, no, don't even worry about it. Even if you're not getting a direct model, like don't even worry about it. It, it. It's a it's a marketing gimmick. It's a smart marketing gimmick, and it's one that I would use if I was a manager at one of these companies. Heck yeah, I'd be like yeah, use all of our products, and they'll work really really well together. So is it really true? No, it's not really true. Um, they're all part of the same, and Integra is like the house. So Integra is Onkyo, but it's sold through dealers, if that makes sense. Yeah. There's sometimes like some extras, but I mean, really for Integra, it's, and quite frankly, I think the Pioneer and the Onkyo are probably identical. If you take off the, the top of it and you start to look in there, um, they're sharing a lot of the same parts, which again is smart. And that's what I would do if I was, you know, running a company is I would use as many similar parts as I could. Because brain loyalty, like some people love Onkyo, some people love Pioneer. It's really the same thing now, but if you love Pioneer, if you've always driven a Ford, they'll give you a Ford to drive. Anyway, Mookie, $79.99. Isn't that what their price is anyway? If it's the three-way, I'm not a fan. Mookie. Oh. Mookie speaker. Oh yeah, it's the three way. Not a not a fan. Not a fan. The two way is much better. Much better. Randy, you rock. You rock, Renan. Renan. Is the Lock G A thirty a worthwhile upgrade from the S? No. If it is not, is there better uh, A I O desktop amp? I'm not sure what A I O means. Analog inputs. I don't know. I know what the 8018 is. 8018 and the Lockshi A30 have the exact same chipset, the Infineon 12070. And I would imagine that their circuit layout is almost identical. The A30 does come with a headphone jack. I think the 8018 does too. But no, it's the same amp repackaged. Um, and it's going to sound identical. I would look at the, um, if you don't mind the looks of it, it's a heck of a lot more natural sounding is the IEMA D03. IEMA D03. And IEMA is running a bunch of sales right now. Actually, I'd look at this thing, man. T9. Spectacular. No headphone output, though. Um, tone controls, remote control, cool UV meter. You got tubes, uh, full complement DAC on the back. Um, sounds spectacular. Uses a Texas Instruments uh, chipset. Uh, really, 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 really awesome. Really, really awesome. Play with it a lot, though, in the first 30 days because some people have uh, said that there's some issues. Mine never had an issue. Most of the people that bought it, they, theirs has never had an issue either. Here's the one that I would look at. So the DO3. Uh, another Texas Instruments um, amp, and it's really good. Um, subwoofer output, I believe. Yeah, sub out. Yeah, really, really good. I like this one. It's not, it's nothing like it's not pretty, but I really like it. Um, how TF does he know the chipsets? Savant? No, man, it's just posted on their uh, the spec sheet. Like almost all of the um, the speaker amps, class D speaker amps from about 18 months ago to probably six months ago utilize like the Infineon 12070s. And there's still a bunch that do. The DA9 does, but that's a different implementation. That's a balanced implementation. 
So you have these chipsets and they can be implemented differently, but they all somewhat maintain the same sonic characteristic, especially if you're using the same type of power supply, which many of these use the same type of power supply because these are kind of all rebranded. Not all of them. A lot of them are. So the 8018, the uh, A or S300 from um, SMSL, that was the same amp. It had some different inputs and outputs. Same amp. Even the same uh, footprint. So, and then Topping had a bunch of 12070s. So the, the amps that changed everything for me from a Class D perspective was the crop of amps that started using Texas, Texas Instruments chipsets, the 3255 especially. There's another 3000 variant of the Texas Instrument chip that's also sounds really good. And that's the one that's in the T9. But the A07 has a 3255. I think the A300 has a 3255. The Topping PA5 has a 3255. The Fozzie Audio. Oh, what is it? It's this one. Uh, TB um, 10. TB10D uh, also uses the 3255. Um, this one initially was horrible, but you know what? I gave it a horrible review and Fozzy Audio reached out to me and said, hey, we saw your review. We appreciate the feedback. Would you be willing to listen to it? We've changed a few things. I said, absolutely. So still haven't listened to this one yet, so I don't know. Also, the cool thing about the 3255 chips is that you can use higher power. So that chipset is rated from a specific voltage for the power supply. You can go all the way up to like a 48 volt power supply on the 3255 chipset where the 12070 doesn't have that ability. So it's limited at the voltage that it can take in. So there's a lot of hmm, freedom. There's a lot of versatility with the Texas Instruments chips compared to the 12070s. So no, I'm not a savant. I'm just an idiot that reads the spec sheets and listens to a lot of amplifiers. Okay. Call me skeptical. Anyway, I hope that that, that uh, answered your questions. Oh, all in one AIO. I got gotcha. you. Uh, Bob, I have the topping DX3 Pro Plus with the PA3. He's happy with it. There you go. Uh, if you want to tube roll, getting to be a bit of a pain to find tubes, non-Chinese, at a decent price. I did find some uh, new old stock General Electrics recently. Yeah, it depends on the, the uh, tube, too. So, like, the tubes that are in here, very a lot more common. I think the more, more esoteric tubes, it gets very difficult to find um, new tubes for those. Hey, if you want to support the channel, click through any of my links down here in the description. Um, even if you're not interested in buying anything, if you're going to buy some toilet paper, it's still great. It still helps out the channel. Um, they're not as roll off and measure flatter. How many people? 548 people in here? Holy cow. I think this is the most I've ever had on a live stream. Maybe 600? Holy cow. Hey, hit the like button. If you're if you're in here, hit the like button. Unless you hate me, which is not uncommon. Uh, found your channel a few months ago. I am addicted. Love it. I am choosing between Polk ES30 Center with Polk ES15 fronts versus Yamo C9 Center with Yamo C93 two fronts using Pioneer VSX1020. Hmm. Okay. So these this is actually a good comparison because. The Polk, the new Signature Elite series, which is funny that they say ES when the actual name is Signature Elite. I would think it'd be the Polk SE. Anyway, it replaces the uh, Polk S series that I wasn't overall impressed with. The S20 was okay. The S15 was, mm -mm. actually, the, I still have the S15s there in my daughter's room. Anyway, the ES30s, the ES15s, um, is a bit of a warmer presentation, which is fairly uncommon for a speaker in that price range. The C9 and the C93 twos, which I also own. Hold on. The C93 twos in my bedroom right now, although they're not hooked up because I'm running a, a uh, sound bar in there. 
C ninety three twos really special speaker. However, they're completely boosted on top and the bottom. So the mids are very scooped out, whereas the mids on the Polk ES-15s are going to be more linear with the top end a little bit more rolled off. So those are two very different sounding speakers. For home theater, see, you're going to be running a center, so it doesn't matter really anyway. If you were running just two speakers for home theater, I'd actually say c 93 is because the dialogue is going to be better. Um but I think the Polks are on sale, but also the Yamos have been constantly on sale. I think that's going to get replaced soon. Um, so, yeah. Either way, it's a really good combination. I have the C9 Center, and I do have some resonance issues on there. So I do plug the port. It's a giant port on the back of that speaker. So, like, I don't know what the purpose of it is. I think their bookshelf speakers are a lot better designed than their center channel. I think the Polk ES-15, which I also had in for review, pretty good. It's got like six little woofers in there and then one one-inch Terralene soft dome tweeter. So, yeah. Anyway. Invictus, 93% are off on Amazon Prime. All of them? I'm going to be mad if they are. I just bought this one. I just bought this one. It's a 42-millimeter Pro Diva. The bracelet is absolute garbage. Um, so, yeah. Hold on. Let's pull up some Invicta. Invicta Pro Diver. You can do a little, little, little watch stuff in here. Uh, let's see how much they are. 53 87 What? Come on, man. I wonder if I can return mine. Oh, that's quartz, though. Um, makes me sad. I over I overpaid thirty dollars. Um. Anyway, nobody cares about watches except for you, death, death owner eighty eight. I like watches though. Here, let's get off this. Uh, we'll go to oh, Polk Reserve Series. We haven't talked about this one. So this is actually through Crutchfield. Um, crazy deal on these. So let's go. Our oh my goodness, where's the R2? Here we go. 565 for the R200s. Um, and these things are worth every penny of their. I thought it was 700. These things are worth $700 easy, easy, like worth seven, $700. So 565 is very good, very, 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 very good. Rachel, 93% off list, not MSRP, right? Like MSRP is just some fictitious number they came up with out of the cosmos. Like MSRP, like if something's never sold at MSRP, is it really MSRP? No, it's not. So that's a great point. Actually, my cables were marked down from $12,000 to like $35. So it's a 90, 99.6% um, discount. Hey, Randy, just wanted to say thanks for all your recommendations. Currently running ELAC debut 2.0, F6.2 is on an Emotiva TA1, along with an SVS SB1000 using the built-in crossover on the TA1. Cheers. Yeah, TA1 is one heck of a piece of equipment. Um, and if you ever outgrow it, you can use it as a preamp, has base management built in, phono stage, DAC, even has a FM tuner, if you're so inclined. Um, upgraded remote control from the previous generation. So, yeah, it's a great, great, great piece of kit. This is the PT2. I know I can't really see it. This is the PT2, which is um, the preamp version. It's great. It's brilliant. Uh, how do you rate the Polks versus the Dentons? As far as the R200 and R100, different sound signature. Denton have that traditional English sound, a little bit of a warmth in the mid-range, kind of pulls you in. Polk, going to be a little bit more linear on top, if not a little bit boosted. Ring radiator tweeter. It's a good tweeter. It's just kind of like a combo between like a um, AMT and a soft dome. So it doesn't have that metallic ish like a titanium or an aluminum dome has 
So the Polkar 200s are great for most people. The Dentons are going to be great for people that are looking for maybe not as intense of a, of a listening experience. Um, I love the Denton. Love them. Love the Denton. I also love the Polk R100. Um, Rachel, you recently got a used music fatality M3CI integrated amp. No off switch. They just go into standby. Is that common? Yeah, Rachel, actually, some people don't turn off. Like, I don't turn off my my hi-fi equipment. Um, people have told me, like, actually, like, the power cycling, and it's not really the power cycling. It's the cooling and the heating. So if you're constantly cooling and heating, cooling and heating, that can uh, prematurely cause electronics to fail. So I just leave my stuff on. Um and I know a lot of people that have just left stuff on. So absolutely don't be worried about that at all. If anything, it's a good uh, feature to have because your equipment's not going to be like heating up and cooling down. Um, what, is, what was I going to say? Now, in the summer, it does get a little toasty in here. But um, I doubt that thing in standby is probably putting off much heat. So, yeah. Hey, another uh, watch. Invicta Men's Specialty Chronograph Texture Dial Stainless Steel Watch 5636. Very cool. Uh oh, here we go. Invicta Garbage. Uh, Rachel, thank you for your question. Um, don't get many ladies in here. So the la ladies always go first in line. <laughs> it's usually a, a AARP convention of a bunch of dudes. Um, I've been researching DAX for a couple of months now. Nothing against AARP dudes, all right? I'm going to be one of them soon. We're all in the right place, okay? Don't want to alienate anybody, but really, my audience looks like me. A little bit younger, a little bit older. Anyway, I've been researching DAX uh, for a couple of months now, and I've found a used topping D90LE for a great price, 600 Euros. Do you think it's a good buyer? Should I save some more money and buy an SMSL, Sabaj, et cetera? Uh, I would negotiate that down to about $500. It is a good DAC. It's a good $500 DAC. It is not a good $900 DAC. Um, it, it actually, the topping E50 sounds very similar to the D90. And I think that's 250 bucks. So, and it's, they're both sound good though. So it's a, a rich, warm, full presentation, organic, doesn't sound, doesn't have a digital harsh, digital harshness at all that some DACs do. So I like the D90. I don't like it at eight, nine hundred bucks, $500. Yeah. Um, or 500 euros, whatever. Yeah. Try to negotiate them down or tell them like, here's what I would do. I would say, Hey, I'm interested in the DAC. I'm also looking at the, the, uh, the E50 though. And I've heard that you don't really gain much over the E50. Can you do 500 euros or 450 and then see what they say. And if they say no, then go buy the E50. Um, because they don't sound very different. Denton versus diamond diamond 12.2 Denton's warmer, richer, more personality. The um, diamond 12.2 is more linear. So it depends on what you want. Hey, we got more Invicta stuff. Uh, yeah, Invicta are not particularly nice watches. Would rather pay 150 for a Citizen or another reputable brand. Come on, Matthew. They sell a lot of watches, man. I got this one. I got this Pro Diver. Okay, little watch. Here, let me let me get out of this. All right, I got this Pro Diver 17 years ago, and I've beat the ever living crap out of it, and it still runs just fine actually it runs better than a lot of um newer watches i have so 17 years i've had this um now they have better movements and the quality control is better and they're cheaper i think i paid 150 for this in 2005 so i get there's a lot of invicta hate but from my own personal experience at 17 years old and it still works. Um, original band, everything. Uh, 
Gold plated Seiko all day, all day. All right, back to audio. Hey again, Randy, I sent a comment about the Wharf Day on the last video. Please forgive me for the cursed message. It's supposed to be kind. I know my English is awful. I don't know. I didn't see it. Um, truth be told, I'm in the comments for maybe two hours after I post a video. And then after that, rarely am I in the comments, um, simply because there's a lot of comments. And I would like to make... I'd like to spend my time making more content and, you know, being a dad and stuff. <laughs> I'm not, I don't, I don't see all the comments, um, especially if it's a video that gets a lot of them, but uh, you know, you're forgiven. No problem. Um, the Wharfdale 225 is a wealth of quality. That speaker. Yes, it is warm. Rocks my house. Yeah. 225. So here's the cool thing about the 225 and the Denton. 80th. So those were actually kind of um, only sold through one sales channel. And the Denton 80th just came back to uh, Wharfdale, USA. So those are both fantastic speakers. Warm, though. And so those speakers are a good kind of introduction into what warm can sound like. Jeremy S., Build around RT85 Klipsch 6s versus 600M with an old Onkyo S608. I got, but no phono ground, so amp preamp needed. Help a brother out to pair. Um, I don't know anything about the Onkyo S608. Here, let's look that up. If it's a two-channel amp, Onkyo S608. If it's a two-channel amp, I say go with that one. Onkyo S608. Come on. Oh, there we go. Oh, it's a 7.2 channel. Um, hmm. Hmm. Okay, here's the... I'll just go into this. Here's the problem with the 6s. It's a powered speaker, right? Like, powered speakers, it's kind of like buying a Tesla. Like... Yeah, they're great. It's convenient. Everything's great. But what if it isn't? The thing about I like uh, thing that I like about like separates is you can kind of tailor the sound to it. So I haven't had great experience with um, Onkyo home theater stuff for music. Um, so it doesn't always sound the best to me for music. If you have a EQ in there, you can go in and start playing with that. Um, personally, I would go with passive speakers. Um, so, and that one doesn't have a phono preamp. Then you can get something like this. I know that's a lot of boxes. If you're, if you want like pure convenience, then yeah, go with um, powered speakers and stuff. But I personally like separates. Um, that's just my, my opinion. I like to tailor stuff though. Cause you'll find something that you really like. And then you're like, eh, I don't want to spend like, and that's a cool thing too, about going separates is you're not like replacing a whole box. So, oh my goodness. I don't like this amplifier. Now I need to get another $1,200 integrated amplifier. you can be like, Hey, I'm maybe you want to see if there's an upgrade from the Fozzy audio to the, um, can't really see it right there. The tube, the project tube box s2 um the sith audio have a prime day yeah it was the day that they went up it was 99.6 percent off 55 percent off tso is a very good quality brand of watch and uh fact highly collectible i have uh tso right here and then I have my first Swiss watch was a TSO. Got it in 2006 in Zurich, of all places. I didn't speak a lick of Swiss German. The guy didn't speak any English. If he did, he didn't let me know. Um, I bought it. I get home and I saw it for $100 cheaper on Amazon. <laughs> I still have it, though. I love that watch. I don't wear it very much, though. Uh, I thought Prime Day was in June or July. This is confusing. I'm not a prime member because there is nothing in it for me, but this is still confusing. All the black Friday stuff is messed up this year. Uh, Elliot, I don't know what to tell you. You need to take that up with uh, Jeff Bezos, uh, but there is 
prime day in the summer and there seems to be prime day in October. But if you have some self-control and you can wait till one of these, you can get a good deal and stuff. Uh, don't see many comparison of SVS Ultras and Polk R200 thoughts. Woo. Okay, so I did, I compared the SVS Ultras to the Wharfdale Evo 4.2 and the Elac Unify reference. I thought the Ultras were great. I actually preferred the Ultras over both of them. I think the um, the Wharfdale Evo 4.2s can, in some applications, be better, but they were pretty fickle about placement. So you had to get them towed in just right. Also, the height had to be just right because they have a big two-inch um, dome mid-range driver. And if you get that at ear level, mid-range is really forward. And it's a tall speaker, too. Um, so that was a little bit like I think – I think the Evo 4.2 is better than the Ultra in very slim applications. I think the SVS Ultra is better than the 4.2 in pretty much all applications because you can just kind of put them up and forget it. I like the I like the Ultras a lot. Um, and then the uh, Unify reference, they were good, but not. I didn't think they were as good as the Ultras, or for me, for me personally. Um, how would you describe the punchiness of the Tecton lore? Um, really not much. I have heard that after a lot of break in that they get punchier. Um, Ryan Benson, $10. Thank you very much. I don't, I don't know. Uh, Tecton lore didn't do it for me. They were good. They were good. They kind of had that, uh, model, uh, KLH model five vibe, but, um they're not here anymore and i bought those speakers so nobody sent those to me so they were not in the house very long all right we got todd it's a super punchy i promise i listen it depends on the amp maybe i didn't let them break in long enough um i had them on two or three different amps um i think the uh schkit vidar was the one that kind of i thought was the best Okay, so Todd is saying it takes forever to burn in. There you go. So um, if you want to wait eight months to get a speaker and then wait another three months to uh, have them burn in, Tecton Lower is the speaker for you. Um, and if you want them not to send you the grills that you paid for or the spikes, Tecton Lower is for you. Um, and then have issues with one of the drivers, Tecton Lower is for you. Um Anyway, I'm not cropping on Tecton. Just, this is my experience. All right. Block user. There we go. We had some, uh, what do you call it? Spam. Not sure if anyone mentioned this, but the 2021 Apple TV. Yeah, I um, I brought that up, Sean. Um, thank you for reminding me because I'm probably going to buy one of those right after we get off of here. Boop. And then we'll go here. $123. Not too shabby. Not a bootlicker. Which two Metallica records do you like and listen to the most besides the Black Album and Justice? Oh, uh, um, Master of Puppets, which I think is the best, best mental album ever. Ever. Um, like every song, like you can listen. I can When I listen to that record, every song, front to back. And then uh, this is kind of cheating, but S and M too. I just think it's a mag. What do they call it? Magnum opus. I think that was Metallica at at their finest with the San Francisco Symphony Orchestra. Just absolutely stunning that record. Um, stunning, stunning. Hey Ogden. Oh man, you are so clear at it, Lors. Yeah, Ogden actually bought mine. So I'm not saying that lures don't sound good. I'm saying I don't like I don't like the weights. I don't like the fact that you got to burn them in. I don't like the fact that I didn't get the um, the uh, grill sent. I don't like the fact that they left off the spikes. Um, I don't like the fact that I had to replace two drivers on them. Um, so yeah. All right, we already had that one. All right. Any other super chats? 
Orion. Yeah, man. Like I had some of my fr friends that aren't into metal. I had them listen to Orion. I'm like, J just give this a chance. Just listen to this. And um, they all liked it. Uh, Jonathan Taylor, $5. Thank you. Need help buying speakers for my siblings. Yamo S809 and C93 are options, but 225 is the budget per sibling. Start of home theaters and midsize rooms. Ooh, I'd go with the C93s. They're built way better. They're built way better. The Yamo S809s are they're nice, but it's kind of like a piece of um of uh, what do I call it? IKEA furniture. Like you put it together and then you leave it where you put it together. As soon as you start moving it around, like bad things start to happen. And that's the same thing with the Yamo S809s. Like I had them in here. I moved them once and like they started peeling up and stuff. So I think long-term the C93 is going to be going to last way longer than the S809s. And frankly, I think the C93s sound much better. Um, different. Yeah, they just sound much better. It's a better speaker. The, the concert series is a much better speaker. All right. I got to get a drink. Man, we've been at this for a while, huh? How long have we been doing this? All right, Ryan Benson, $10. Big fan, been watching since the start. Thank you, Ryan. I try to watch some back some of my old videos. They were pretty bad. I built some uh, Crichtons, one TDX, based on your recommendation. I love them. Love them, but looking for a new flavor. What what's should be next? The Crichtons are... A really good top to bottom speaker um on the bottom end they're just brutes um i think the denton is a good um fun alternative and then you can look at so i would look at the denton i would also look at the emotiva b2 plus because the Crichton is kind of like perfect on the bottom end if you don't have a small room but the uh, Emotiva B2 Plus are like perfect on the top end. So very different flavor. You're going to hear things in the music you haven't heard before. And they're $500. So yeah, that's what I would do. Hey, it's my good special friend, Chris Studebaker. One of the speaker builder Patreon said the AKM chip J2 is more clear than the Denifreps Aries 2. Um, yeah, I don't have the Denifreps in here anymore. Um they're both great. I love them. But I mean, after I got the J2s in and it's kind of like, okay, yeah, maybe the Aries 2 is better, but is it three times better? No. So I'm going to buy a J2 and then I'm going to spend, I'm going to go buy a turntable or something. That's how my brain thinks. Bought the Wii Mini based on your review. Thank you. Thank you, Jay. Um, hook it up to an external DAC. It sounds really awesome. Hmm. Here's Sith Audio's partnering with Gidunk <laughs> Audio. There's some Navy, Navy slang for you. Gidunk. Um, sailors in here know what Gidunk means? All right, Kevin, you can't answer this. Does anybody know what Gidunk means um, besides Kevin and I? Um, so I'm going to wait for that one. White Yamaha uh, 803 going for 115. Wow. Yeah. Um, if you're on a budget, the, the 800 series uh, Yamo is the S series. I mean, is really good. But like I said, it's like a IKEA entertainment center. Leave it there. Otherwise, they'll start to they'll start to show their design limitations. All right, uh, Yamo S803. All right, there you go. 114. And usually they have this. Actually, usually they have the uh, five channel on sale. There you go, man. 114. We have it. We have a winner. Uh, Chris Veltman, junk food. That's right. Candy. Candy. JG. Lieutenant JG. Uh, I have three Tisa watches. Great watches. I have two. I agree. Uh, Gidunk may have been a very USN specific joke reference. Yeah, that's what I, we got one though. It, it didn't take long at all. Chris Feldman. Um, but can anyone find white Yamo 
S8 Atmos. I don't know. You don't need Atmos speakers to be Atmos speakers unless you like want to mount them to the top and have them matchy matchy. Does AudioQuest sell t shirts? I'd like to support the company. I think they're awesome. You buy some cables, man. They have a healthy margin. And I'm not saying like that is a bad thing. Like, I'm glad. Like, if you have a good company, then you should be able to make money off of it. Um, I don't know if they sell t shirts. I got a whole box of AudioQuest stuff in the um, whole box of it. AJ, my guess would be something that stinks. Actually, quite the contrary. It's yummy junk food. Uh, once again, thanks, Randy, for turning me on to the Sony SSCS5. I now have three pair. I say this all the time. When they go down to like 80 bucks, like if I was doing a home theater on a budget, I would do all Sonys, including the center channel. So I'd, I would break up one pair and just use one as the center channel um they're so good so good Whew. i'm running out of steam here i've been talking so much dax suggestions for the Wii mini um for 250 bucks uh just shelly labs j2 all day long you'd have to you have to get it in um aluminum um you can get it wood for a little bit more but the cool thing about the $250 version is it doesn't have a USB module. So you're saving 50 bucks optical right out of the wing into the J2 and you're done. However, you're going to have to control volume on the Wii mini or the app, the amplifier or integrated amplifier that you have. Um, outside of that, the Modi three plus whatever it is now, at about 120 is good. There is one from SMSL that I liked. Um, I think it was the DX3 Pro. Wasn't terribly expensive, and it has a lot of functionality and sounds good. Does Skit sell T-shirts? I don't know. I have three or four of them, though, from the audio roundup. I have a bunch of, and I haven't even washed them yet. So there's, you know, like when you get a new T-shirt and you don't want to wear it because it's kind of scratchy and stuff. I have a whole bunch of Schkit and Emotiva t-shirts. Do you have a favorite pressing for Master of Puppets vinyl? Um, no. I like the Walmart exclusive ones. I think they sound great. I think I have the Walmart exclusive Master of Puppets. Um, hold on. Oh, I should talk about this too. Um, hold on. Sorry, my vintage Yamaha manual is right here, and I don't want to mess that up. All right, I got a bunch of records I got to put in my floor. <laughs> Look at this. That's not Master of Puppets, but it's a Metallica record. This is, I always forget the name of it, um, but it's, it's really awesome. It's a plastic box that you put your records in. But it's the best plastic box. It's one of those things that you don't think you need. And you think it's kind of stupid. And then you get it and you're like, I wish I had this my whole life. Okay. You guys got me out of breath. Oob Cube. They make these awesome. Here, let me put it up. Oob Cube makes these incredible like record boxes and you can see the artwork through them and they are really well made. Um, there we go. And I don't think it's just record stuff. Um, Oob cube. You got to go check them out. It's so good. So yeah, it's collapsible like that. Uh, although I don't know why I'd collapse it anymore. And then you can stack them on top of each other. It's really, really something else. Um, really impressive. I thought they were more expensive than this. Yeah, for $24.99, it's like a no-brainer. Anyway. And they've got, like, uh, rubber feet so they don't move around. I mean...
Yeah. Hold on. Sorry. Not very good at this. Um, but yeah, this is the Walmart exclusive Master of Puppets. I have another one. I, I like to collect Metallica um, records. But yeah, all of the Walmart exclusive pressings have been, uh, have exceeded my expectations. A wing to topping DX3, that's it, Pro Plus and an amp. I'm using the topping PA3, uh, all under $400. Yeah, that's it. I, th I said SMSL. It was actually a topping. My goodness. All right. Well, I might, I might call this, let, let's answer a few more questions. Let's go back to, I want to give these guys um, a shout out because they were kind enough to send me these and I haven't done a review on them, but they are spectacular here. Let's, um, let's do them a favor. Everybody go click on their link and if anybody buys uh, show them some love and say, Hey, you, you, you learned about it from the cheap audio. I mean, I don't even have an affiliate relationship with these guys. So it's just one of those products that, you know, how do you make a review on a box? And I could do like an accessories review, but I don't have enough accessories to like fill up a whole video with that. But and it, they come with like these cool, like inserts. So you can do, like these, this plant, this area right up here, it comes with a plastic thing. You can put your own artwork in there, and then on the other side, it shows you like the record that's on the out. So, like if you have a bunch of records and you don't have a lot of area, you can do like, hey, this is my classic rock cube. This is my metal cube. This is my I don't know jazz cube. They're really good. Like I, I would never have bought one. But now that I got one, I'm like, okay, I'm going to get a whole bunch of those. Um, yeah, I'm getting some oob cubes for sure. Rachel, awesome. Um, actually, I was trying to click on John, but things are rolling in so quickly. Here we go. John, an unboxing of a box. Everybody, let's give it up. Big round of applause. John Shepler is the... Father of Roctopus. Yay. Actually, this might be the next Sith Audio product. It may be a bunch of Roctopi. Packing them is going to be a real pain, though, because this part right here, very fragile. Roctopi. John, will you build a hundred of them for me? Um... Not for free, of course, I'd pay you. Who? Let's vote for it. Who wants Roctopus to be the next Sith Audio product? Um, hold on. Todd says, crates look heavy and solid. No sagging, I'm guessing. No. no. I think you could park a car on these. Um, <sighs> looks like a milk crate. Yeah, listen, man. I'm not shilling these. So go get yourself a bunch of milk crates then. For me, I'm going to spend 25 bucks on a new cube. Um, all right. Anybody want uh, Father of Octopus? Let's say, uh, give me a yes. We'll see how many yeses we get in here. Sith Audio Products. Rock! Spam can. I would consider buying one. All right. We got a bunch of yeses. Ah, oh, look at this. 100% with a Roctopus octopus emoji. Hello again from New Zealand, Randy. Yes, Roctopus. John, I think we might be on to something here. Um, you may need to get all your 3D printers up and running at the same time. Yes, got to be rainbow. Like, I don't think that these are easy to make. John is, is kind enough to have made me a whole bunch of cool 3D printed um, things. This is way back in the beginning. This was a um, 3D printed vader buddha and then like you may get a kick out of this one too he did a 3d printed steve gutenberg <laughs> i 
which we did a bigger version and we actually sent it to Steve early on when the channel started because Steve did an interview with me. But yeah, Rocktopus gives me great pleasure every time I come and I look at it. And usually it has a place of reverence on whatever speaker I'm listening to. Um, opinion on getting the ELAC edition one speakers for a desktop. I don't even know. They, is that the powered speaker? I have a box of them right there. I don't know if it's the edition one though. Show the Randy button. Tony, that's not a, like, I don't know where he's at. Oh, all my action figures are falling down now. See what you're doing to me, Tony? I don't know where Randy went. It really looks more like Ron Perlman than Randy, though. Um, maybe I was a little bit heavier back then. I don't know where Randy's at. Sorry. There was a there was a cheap audio man bus too, but it must scare me enough that he's not around anymore. He probably fell behind something. Whew. I should do a 3D printed speaker. Yeah, what possibly could go wrong in that one? Oh, coffee mug with my picture. I have this one. Um, I have a Rocktopus coffee mug. And then on the back it says, uh, binge listen and fill your soul with happiness. Those are available in my merchandise store. Problem with coffee mugs, like everything's printed on demand. So coffee mugs are expensive when you do them one at a time. Rocktopus def must most definitely adds to the overall sound quality for sure. Hiding under the helmet. Rocktopus is greater than Rock Lobster. Very good. You know, the B-52s, when they were, um, like, in the 80s, they were on uh, MTV a lot. And, like, I don't know what it was, but I was, like, in junior high. And I was, like, I, the B-52 ladies were very attractive to me. They're dancing around in their little go-go outfits. I got a big kick out of the B-52 girls. All right. I thought I blocked this person. Uh, Rocktopus on an amp or DAC reduces micro vibrations and improves the sound. Absolutely 100% guaranteed to improve the sound of any hi-fi system, the Rocktopus. Man, they're really hammering me now. Error occurred. Block user. Uh-oh. They're hammering us now here. Maybe I can put them in timeout. Put user in timeout. There we go. Freeze up. Are we back? There's also a Rocktopus t-shirt. That's right. Am I back? Did it go away? Did it die? Uh, Room and Love Shack. Rome and Love Shack. Yeah, great videos. Rome, if you want to. Roam around the world. Take a hip. <laughs> Man, I haven't listened to that for a while. What about Rocktopus Tumblr with sippy cup lid? Listen, we're not all alcoholics, man. <laughs> I'm just kidding. That would be cool. Billy Gray says I'm back. Back. You know, I was going to wrap this up, but let's just keep hanging out. It's, um, what have we been doing this for? About an hour and a half? We keep going. I don't have to go to the bathroom. I don't have anywhere to go. Kids don't get out of school for a couple hours. Yeah. Rocktopus. Okay. So, B2ME. This is the exact idea that I had. Is how cool would it be? I talked to John about this. How cool would it be to have one of these and then a little octopus on top that would rotate around? Um, so, not only is that a good idea, it's one that I, I have had. I just don't know how to make it work. Um, and I think really what one would need to do is either have it completely cast out of the same material, which then you're going to lose a bunch of detail, or you're going to have to print individual Rocktopi and then ad adhere them to the top. Um, the problem is Rocktopi don't ship well. So anyway, sand person. Just a little random fun. Fact. And you know what China sent me? 
the whole country that they sent me for Christmas. Very nice. Um, the Chinese folks that I deal with are really into gifts. And I didn't know this, but Christmas, like they send you gifts. And it's not like hi-fi related stuff. They sent me a bunch of these little prosperity tigers. And apparently you're supposed to put these around the house. And where you have these, uh, it's supposed to bring prosperity to you. Anyway, very nice. David Johnson says, great show today, Randy. Back to work. David, thank you for joining us. How cool is it that this is my work now? You guys, every one of you that watches this has, have made my dreams come true. I am working right now, and I love it. I love it. You guys are the best. And gals, Rocktopus logo on women's two... Oh, call it boating wear. I like bikinis. Um, Jeep is two channel setup that you'd be happy with in your home. And why is it the IEMA T9 with the Emo T would be one of the fluent? And, and why is it? Uh, I don't get it. Um, so the cheapest two channel setup that would you'd be happy with. Um, so it'd be the Sony's if they're on sale. Um, probably the T9. Um, a Wii Mini that I'm optical into the T9. And then uh, probably a Fluence RT81 because it has a phono uh, stage in it. So that would be, let's say, let's say 80 bucks for the Sonys when they're on sale. 120 for the IEMS here at 200. Um, and then uh, Wien Mini would be like another 80. So that's 280. And then I think the RT81 is 250. So just north of 500 bucks. Um, and I'd be perfectly happy with that. Frankly, I've been I usually run the, excuse me. I usually run the Sony's like near field all the time. Um, Rick Brashear, are you Charles related to Charles Brashear? The, fam the famous Navy diver super sticker, $5. Thank you. Whew. I just sub to that. Kevin Gardner, glad your new career is working out. Thank you for everything. Oh, yeah, big time. Oh, Kevin, thank you so much for being um, a big supporter of the channel from the very beginning. Um, what's your recommendation for CD player? A old Oppo Blu-ray player. If you can find them, I got mine for 60 bucks. Um, but in all seriousness, I have a... Um, an emotiva it's not cheap um but you look at um there's not a lot of folks that make them anymore i think audio lab sells a very good cd transport uh cambridge audio sells i think a 300 dollars cd player i think it also has a digital out and then they also sell a five or six hundred dollar cd transport so transport is one that doesn't have a DAC in it um so yeah those are some options but like if you're just new into CDs, I would just go out and buy any type of DVD player that has an optical or digital output and then just put it into your DAC for, you know, for less than you can go to the, you can go probably go to Goodwill and find one and walk out of there with 10 CDs for under $20. Um, Rotel has a couple of CD players. Yep. Uh, I think they have one that matches the A11 tribute. Um, but again, we're talking some bucks though. So if you want to be cheap, go cheap audio man style, run on over to your uh, Goodwill, grab an old DVD player with a, a digital output and uh, a stack of CDs. You can also go into Best Buy and they have like a really base level DVD player. I think it's 15 or $20 new. It's about the weight of a pad of paper, um, but it plays CDs. I have the Sony DH190 receiver with preamp outs. Subwoofer I just purchased only has one input, LFE. How do I connect them together? Uh, preamp, uh, so you go, uh, you'll get two RCAs into a single RCA and then run that out. Um, that's how you do that. Or you can get a single like male RCA into two female RCAs and then hang that off your subwoofer and then stick an RCA in there. What you really do want to do is just combine those channels. Uh, am I into DASD CDs? I am not. Um, but I do have, ironically, 
a Sony Ultra HD Blu-ray player, or high def Blu-ray, whatever it's called, and it will play SACDs because SACDs is actually a Sony format, so pretty much all of the Sony Blu-ray players can play SACDs. So if you want to get an SACDs for cheap, get a Sony Blu-ray player. Whew. And the Acer streaming, why would you want a CD player? CD player, uh, CDs sound better. Um, you don't have uh, you don't have any variability. Um, you have a known format. Um, I mean, you can have scratches and stuff. But what I do is I get a CD, and then I rip it to um, a hard drive using Exact Audio Copy, which is a free software. And then um, I listen to CDs, and then I put it on my NAS. So I can stream my CDs if I want to through my NAS. But um, not only that, but like physical media is awesome. What if, what if your internet goes down? Right. So, I mean, I, I can still, I can't actually, if my internet goes down, then I can't stream from my NAS um, because I'm not hard networked in. I like CDs. I like putting them in. I like playing them. I like listening to records in their entirety. Um, so yeah, CDs the bomb. All right. Uh, Lee lay something thanks for your videos great info i love my emotiva b1 pluses thank you uh i still buy cds another like why wouldn't you like cds are the cheapest now than they've ever been you can go buy a new cd for 10 to 15 dollars in 1988 a new cd cost 13 to 15 dollars sometimes 20 that's let, let's talk about like inflation 1988. So $13 in 1988 is about $30 today. So even when people complain about the cost of vinyl, I think this was 22 bucks, maybe a little bit less. I paid $13 in 1988 for CDs all day long. I'd line up to do it. This is less in today's and today it's less than what it would be in 1988 dollars. Physical media is awesome. It's awesome. You don't have to. If you don't like CDs, don't get them. But I love CDs. I got a whole rack of them back there. Love them. Love them. Love them. Garage sales. Use CDs. They're great. Brian Romska. See you tomorrow, buddy. See you tomorrow. Yeah. Uh, Nord Nordos Odin two audio interconnects are just twenty two. Wait, twenty two thousand two hundred euros a pair. That sounds like a bargain. Love CDs. My way, main way of listening to music. Yeah. Use CDs are a total bargain. I prefer CDs, but I like album art on my TV screen. I really wish a new format gained traction. Uh, here, you know what you can do, man, is, um, yeah, that would be cool. Love flipping through the CD booklet and listening. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know who said that, but I'm not trying to dog on you, but like, that's why all of this. That's why people want CDs. I have hundreds, if not thousands of CDs. I love physical media. Yeah. Yeah. It's the bomb. It's awesome. That's like, that was my opening up, the cassettes. I mean, I even have some cassettes that I don't listen to. Actually, this is brand new and it came with a crack. I don't listen to them, but I still, like, it's not, it's about the experience, right? So it's not just the music. It's about everything that goes, like, why would anybody listen to vinyl? Like, for the expense and inconvenience. I actually want to make up a t-shirt that says, I'm into vinyl. I listen to vinyl because of the expense and the inconvenience. Like, why would anybody listen to vinyl? Vinyl is a huge resurgence. You can go into Target or Walmart right now and go back in their electronic section. And at the end of a row, not like buried somewhere in the row, at the end of the row, you get three uh, turntables and choose from 20 different vinyl records. Like physical media is the best. 
album art kiss he used to throw all kinds of insane extras in their lps yeah like you know what i love about vinyl man is like i'm gonna put a a shelf up there and then i'll just switch out you know some records it's art it is art man that you can put on your wall i wouldn't recommend you know hammering it into the wall but yeah nothing beats vinyl cover art so yeah like it's not just about the music like if it was just about the music Everybody would stream. It's not. Love gun. LP came with an actual paper love gun. Anyone remember that? <laughs> uh, did an EB test with the Eagles one of these nights on Amazon HD Music against the CD. The CC. I think. What? Don't keep me in. Don't keep me in suspense. What happened? Hey, Robert. Um, you better support the artist when you buy physical copies. What? I don't get it. I don't get what that means. Um, yeah. Not quite sure what that means. Because, I mean, every time you stream, you support the artists. And actually, streaming has been kind of the best thing for, like, unknown artists. Because they can put their stuff up on Amazon Music, Tidal, uh, Apple Music, Spotify. And then they do their own marketing. So if they're good and they get the word out, they're going to get paid. Whereas before they would never been able to get paid. Um, now for a while it was a little hairy about how artists got paid with streaming, but um, I think streaming is great. I think he meant you do better when you support. Okay. Artists are supported either way now. Either way. Like there's, with Napster 2000, 20 years ago, you know, it was very difficult to, um, to add it all up. Like record sales were easy, right? Um, so it's different now, but I think it's actually better for unknown artists because there is an avenue for them to get paid. Like recording and technology has gotten so good that you can record a record in your house. If you want to, you can put it up on one of these streaming services and you can start getting paid if you, you know, are good and if you've gotten the word out. Liner notes. Sorry, the Eagles, one of these nights, the CD beat the Amazon HD music. CD sounded more dynamic. Um, and I, I hear that a lot. And I think that could have something to do with power supplies. Um, so I think like a higher end streamer with a better power supply may be more dynamic. But there's so many variables and we'll never be able to like put our finger on each one of them about streaming because also if you got a cd player like there's variables there what kind of power supply does it have a cacophony of options with both but isn't it a cool time that we live in or we can go out and buy a cd for less than what it costs in 1988 and we can stream like we can stream anything we want and then figure out what CD we want to go by or what record we want to go by. Because do you remember in 88, 89, 85, 86, going to the record store and flipping through it and knowing that there's may, maybe two good songs on a record and you're, it's a gamble. You're taking a risk when you pull that thing out and you go give them your money for delivering papers or working on the farm or something like that. You're giving them your money and there's no guarantee that there's going to be anything good on there except for one or two songs. What a world we live in, man. We have more access to music than in the history of man. Um, so, yeah. I have Apple Music. Wish there was a better service for high-res. Yeah. You know what's ironic is you can actually play high-res Apple Music through uh, an Amazon device, through voice and actual streaming. Or most, like, usually the only way to get Apple Music into a device is to airplay it. And there's... There's issues with that, too, because it changes the format to ALAC and then streams it via um, Airfly. And sometimes if there's not enough throughput, it actually downgrades it to AAC. So um, the irony is an Amazon device is actually one of the few devices outside of maybe Sonos that actually streams Apple Music. Streams it, not like through Airplay. So crazy. I think the CD master is sometimes different from the streaming master. I feel like CD masters are usually more dynamic and grand. There you go. 
Uh, there's no better algorithm than title and the quality is great. I've been listening to a lot of title and I agree. Like I, I just let title do his thing last night and I keyed up. It was a live, um, uh, Chris Cornell from songbook. It was a lot, one of his live songs. And then I just let it run. And man, there's so many like live acoustic versions of like nineties music that I'd never heard. I listened to, these the meze what is it 109 pro i listened to these for like three hours last night and just had a ball also i was listening to it through dragonfly blue cobalt from audio quest actually they're going to run a deal so we're going to give away some dragonflies um some dongle decks from audio quest Title has an excellent veterans discount. They do. They sure do. Whew. Title high fi tier is like five dollars with veterans discount. That's. Thank you for bringing that up. Emotiva also offers a veterans discount. Um, so yeah. Hey, here we go. Todd Trowbridge, if you have a good digital streaming front end, the difference between lossless streaming and CDs is very minimal. Yes, I've done the A/B test. Well, Todd, like, for most people, like Todd, you're like a super user. You're a super person, Todd. Todd's a super user. So I think like it goes back to my argument before. If you've got the right setup, if you've got a great streamer, if you've got everything really dialed in perfectly, then I think streaming can sound fantastic. I think CDs can sound, sound fantastic. Uh, would you say the Meze 109 Pro are worth $370 more than the hi fi Edition XS? Absolutely, because they're different. They're like one is not better. And that's one of the things about like I've learned through this channel through the last almost two years, like in the 19th, we're coming up on two years. Sometimes like what you have to do, if you're going to say something is better, you've got to sort things into columns and the excess and the 109 pro don't go in the same column. Right. So you can't say one is better than the other. What you can say is one is better for somebody's specific tastes and proclivities. But you can't say, ah, this is better. And I think reviewers that do that, and I'm, listen, I'm guilty of this too. I think people that say this is better than this um, are wrong because everybody has different opinions and different tastes. It's like saying one chocolate cake is better than another chocolate cake. It may be, but it may not be. To do a proper like head-to-head -head comparison, you got to talk about what 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 the differences are and what the similarities are. And the XS as a planar magnetic, uh, very open headphone that takes much more power than the uh, what are they 109 Pros? I'm not remembering all my um, anyway than the mezes like you can run the mezes off a computer you can run they're 40 ohms right i don't know what the XS are but i don't think they're 40 ohm so you can't just say one is better than the other um one may be better than the other personally i think those they can both live perfectly well the XS before a prototype headphone amp blew them up was like my go-to headphone love the XS. um they're not right though. <laughs> Got blown up by it. I was really upset because this prototype headphone amp had push button volume control. And it was like, and you didn't know, like when you don't have a, a button that depresses like, or led to tell you where you're at, you don't know where you're at. So I just kept touching. I'm like, is this even happening? And then the music came on. I was like, boom. And the headphones have never quite been right after that. <sighs> It's a long way to say it's difficult to say one thing is better than the other um, when they sound different. And these definitely sound different. The mezes are richer, warmer, not as detailed on top. Um, and they just have that different sound. Like planars have kind of a, a sound. So, yeah. I'd give the Aime a T10 before I bought the Schkit Saga Plus. Cool. All the best, Kevin says. Any prime soundbar recommendations? Prime soundbar recommendations. Um, I don't know. Let's see if the um, 
Let's see if the Cinema 600 is on sale. And then I'm going to call it a day. I'm getting tired. Clips. Oh, let's go back to Amazon. Amazon. <clears throat> Clips sound bar. <clears throat> Cinema 400s, 226. Oh, here we go. Oh, Nelly. 400 bucks, man. Not bad. Um, I like this one. I like it a lot. Um, I like it a lot. $400. Like, personally, if I had $400, I'd probably put together a little two-channel system. But if you're into a sound bar, like, this thing is, is pretty good. And then you can get the wireless surrounds. Um, and I like those wireless surrounds. Like that, this is my favorite sound bar, and I'm a, a huge sound bar fan, but this is it. This is it. Boop. Boop. And then we'll start this one. Uh, any recommendations for a center speaker under 300? It depends. A lot of people say you should timber match your center to your front channels. So the first thing I would do is look at whatever, you know, center channel your front channel offers, but some of center channels aren't very good. Like the Sony center channel is not very good. Um, so I guess it depends. I like the Emotiva C1 plus it's, it's a sealed box as a AMT. And then it has a, also a dedicated mid range driver and then some woofers. Sounds really good. I can't remember how much it is though. I think at one time it was under $300 at one time. A marathon session. Great job. Thanks, Jason Ox. We still have 476 people on. All right. Um, let's go to Emotiva. Let's see how much their center channel is. Emotiva. Speakers. Uh, 350. All right. So it's a little bit outside your price range. Um, whoops, daisies. Here. This is the one that I liked. I don't have it anymore because um, they wanted it back. But I like this one a lot. Ogden Lopez, four ninety nine. Thanks, brother. Someone said concentric. Um, I don't know where it went. Concentric center is best. Yeah, sure. You got a point source. Like how many concentric like center channel speakers are out there, though? Um, I guess you could use like a single one center speakers are like eh. like some people go bananas over center speakers like this has doesn't have good direction i don't know like really like the center channel is just there to like when netflix has a crappy mix you just bump up the center channel a little bit um yeah i wouldn't go crazy over center channels frankly like home theater like speakers, like anything outside, like if you're going to spend money on home theater, spend it on your fronts and maybe your center. And then nothing like doesn't really matter outside of that. People are going to say that it does, but it doesn't like you don't, there's hardly any information going to like the rears, the Atmos stuff like that. Like how realistic do you want like a spaceship coming overhead? Cause we all know what we all have been there and, you know, when we hear the spaceship coming overhead, we know what it's what realistic spaceships flying overhead sounds like. Anyway, spend your money on the front three channels and then don't worry about the rest. You know, just get something that works for your room. Um, but don't get like, don't get caught up in like, oh, I bought some Clips RP 8000 F. I better get some Clips RP 600s for the rears. No, you don't need it. Oh, yeah. SVS centers do both. Um, SVS is a good, I always like SVS always, I always forget about SVS, how good their speakers are. Actually, I have the prime pinnacles. I should bust those out and put those upstairs today. Sean Williams, $10. Randy, thanks for hanging out for a couple hours. I never see the streams live due to work, but I was lucky and caught you today. Awesome work with the channel, bro. Appreciate what you're doing. Sean, thank you so much for your support. I really appreciate it. All right. I think I am going to call it a day. I am getting a bit tired. Um, 
anyway, oh yeah, spend some bucks on your subwoofer too. Um, I agree on that. Like a good sub goes a long way. All right, y'all. Um, if you want to support the channel, just click through any of these links. If you're going to buy anything on Amazon, it doesn't matter. As long as you click through my link and then buy whatever, it helps out the channel. Um, if you want to take a look at some of these products, uh, they should be in the description that I starred some here. Um, I think they're pretty good deals. So yeah, y'all have a great week. Probably going to do this tomorrow too, because there's probably going to be new things that are on sale tomorrow that weren't today. I need to go buy that Apple 4k TV. Cause last time we did this, I slept on it and I didn't get the Apple TV the next day. So y'all have a great, uh, great rest of the week. We'll may, uh, we'll see you tomorrow. Some cool stuff happening this week too. So stay tuned.